All right, Jackson, take it away. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the official podcast. Your four usual men slash boys, boy for me, uh, are here. Jackson, Andrew, Charlie, and Kai. We are joined by an internet legend, Mr. Gigi. How's it going, man? How's it going, guys? I'm Mr. Gigi. I make uh, comedic type videos on YouTube. Nice. Well, I was yeah, that's pretty simple. That pretty was pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's nice to have you, man. Yeah, nice for you guys to have me on. Thank you. Well, if, since Jackson seems to be immediately shy, I'll go ahead and kick us off. Have you <laughs> seen Chris Evans' penis yet, Mr. Gigi? Ah, uh, no, I haven't, dude. Yeah, neither have I. I can't find it. I was looking for <laughs> Wait, it last what? night. <laughs> did he? Did it leak? Yeah, he leaked his penis. He Why? leaked a picture of his cock and a meme that Wait, says, so guard that did? pussy. What? Yeah. Wait, Wait you know so he specifically leaked it on his channel? I mean, on his uh, Twitter? It was or his, something like that? I think it was his Instagram. I think he accidentally posted a picture of that and then that meme that says, guard that pussy. Uh, how was anybody able to verify it was his penis? Because he, Captain he, America outfit. He posted it. He himself <laughs> posted it on his account. <laughs> Yeah, but could so have been been anything. yeah, I believe what it was is he showed off his camera roll to show a handful of different pictures, and one of them was a dick pic in it. Oh, yeah, I found it. Oh, so but it was that an accident. Yeah, that doesn't prove yeah. that it's his, though. No, well, but it, here, I found the story. In a video he shared with his 5.7 million followers, without trimming the clip, he revealed a gallery of videos and pictures, including a photo of his erect penis and a guard that pussy meme. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I don't see a meme here. I just it's literally just a dick pic, but Is it an impressive dick pic though? And how did you find it so quick? Kiwi Farms. Oh. Uh, if there's oh, anything it. obscure that's immediately deleted, you just know some artist on Kiwi Farms already has it. Okay, we just all searching Chris Evans' dick pic right now? <laughs> yeah, it's not a very, it's not a very like, amazing work. picture. It's pretty like low res, and it's, there's nothing special about this dick pic, I'm Where's sorry the guard to say. That, there's no meme there. It's just his cock in black and white. It's yeah, like an yeah. artistic cock photo. What's up with that? And wait, why has he got so many pictures of himself? Like, <laughs> he, it, it, is this like a stand account for him? I like mean, if you looked like pictures. Chris Evans, you'd have a lot of pictures of yourself, yeah. too, Jackson. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, hang on. That, that could compile onto a, a conspiracy theory here. If there's a bunch of, like, headshots and stills of himself, maybe it's, like, a publicist who runs that account for him, and that's the publicist's <laughs> publicist penis. His cock. Yeah, Ooh. he put his cock on there. Oh, I thought you meant he said he's publicist, he's cock. For that promo that might not be Chris Evans' actual dick. That might be the dick of the person who runs the account. No, I, I think he runs his own account because it looks like he streamed on it and such. I don't know. I think that that's America's cock right there. <laughs> that's what I was saying. I can't imagine it would be someone else's dick. I there's no way of one hundred percent knowing though. But Gigi, do you have any uh, insights into this? Do you have any theories? Wild uh, speculation. Well, I can tell you as soon as I started searching it, I found a Reddit post titled "My Cock versus Chris Evans Leaked Dick Pic." <laughs> oh no! Oh, no. bit of a competition going on here. Who wins, the redditor or Chris Evans? Uh... That's tough. I don't know. Yeah, we're putting Gigi I can't on see the, the spot I, to judge I can't, two cocks. For I guess us. the reason why I guess the reason why I can't answer is it doesn't show me the cocks. Oh, no. I just see the title. Oh, bullshit! Come on. This has been removed by moderators. Sorry, Classic guys. Reddit. Oh. I'll let you down. Oh, there's Fucking some Reddit, Reddit censorship going on. They're yeah, removing pictures of other people's cocks. It wasn't the child's to, to, cock, uh, so compare. Reddit doesn't like it. Maybe. <laughs> Oh, right, because Reddit's full of pedophiles? Yep. Is that the, uh... Nice. Fuck me. Okay, enough looking All at these dicks. fucking headlines, though. Everyone, uh, pry well. your eyes away from the cock, please. <laughs> By the way, this is just the entire podcast, guys. Oh, yeah. you'd be surprised. Right. <laughs> it usually yeah. literally is, yeah. And I see he also retweeted, or, like, re-Instagrammed, whatever the fuck you call it, that meme with Thanos, but he's naked, and it's like a gigantic cock. <laughs> God, that's my favorite meme ever created on the internet. 
That's that's actually a pretty decent meme. I, I'm I not think a meme about that, guy, but the Thanos cock one's pretty nice. I think about that so often, Jackson. Do you remember? It may have been the day in my life I laughed the hardest when you and I looked at Stan Lee's fucking Twitter obituary, <laughs> and the top response were all the Thanos cock pictures. <laughs> That, what a legacy. I have not That's laughed good harder legacy. at something in the last year than that. It was so good. <laughs> All right, now our, now our chat is just full of cocks. Enough. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Well, is... that's what we. That's what the fans want, man. <laughs> True, I guess. I, I think that someone just posted... Well, we can't really post this on the podcast for obvious reasons, so <laughs> people at home will have to imagine. But um, someone in, in chat posted this veiny big thick cock and with the comment this is what gg was talking about so i suppose that is the reddit thread there gg you got your answer so gg i have a question for you why is it that every time you come on our show we just talk about men's dicks all the time yeah what is wrong with you i i Can't think it's be because you're calling me by my internet name <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, something so formal, we always just bring out the cocks. This the podcast cocks is cursed now, dude. I'm sorry. Oh, it's been cursed for like years at this point. If talking about oh, dicks yeah. is an indicator, we've been cursed. Oh, from it's the what start. our audience wants, though. Have you guys noticed that pattern? Whenever we put out an episode and we don't focus on like dicks or shitting, we get a group of people who are like, "The podcast used to be good, man. I used to love it, but now it's lost its flair." But then when the episode is about dicks or shitting, everyone's like, this is the best episode in a while. I loved it. It was so great. I miss when they were brave enough to talk about wieners. <laughs> it's just the fan, it's for the feedback pattern I've noticed for the last like 10 episodes. Yeah, I mean, it's true. I uh, missed stuff for like, you know, four years. Still going, talking about farts, dicks, pedophiles. Did you know, for instance, that we are... One of the first podcasts that foresaw, predicted, and brought attention to the current uprising of pedophiles. Really? Mm-hmm. He's so you not guys even are the, memeing. Yeah. You, you guys are the Chris Hansen of podcast. Basically, yeah. And well, one could argue. I would, I would hope not by this point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the past Chris Hansen of the podcast. In his prime, yeah. The Chris Hansen we all knew and loved. And, you know, when Wait, the world so why needed though? the most, I'm out of loop. he vanished. Why what? <laughs> Why, why, why are you not memeing? What's the backstory here? Yeah, he wants to know. Oh no, that just before story. all this shit with like Epstein even being in the headlines, we always used to call these motherfuckers out in Hollywood. And at, there were a few people like, "Ah, oh, Kaya, it's just a conspiracy theory. They're not all fucking kids." And it turns out they are all fucking kids, and just openly know too. Yeah. I would be very interested to know if someone from the audience could pinpoint the exact episode we started making those accusations that were completely baseless back then, but now are true. <laughs> they were, I mean, you can call them baseless, but when you see photos of like Brian Singer. Unconfirmed. The, Unconfirmed. Then, I guess, yeah, yeah. Unconfirmed. Or, and now you have fucking Netflix if, releasing softcore child porn. Oh, the yeah, times have changed. Have any of you guys watched that? No, uh, I, I don't. Uh, I really don't want to. It, they, it's legally yeah, classified yeah. as pedophilia, from what I've seen. Wait, legally? Yeah. Wow. There's a, there's as, a, as a, you can face yeah. uh, jail time for viewing. Probably TVs. not, but it is like legally considered pedophilia, from what I've read. There's a scene where a girl literally makes child porn. She goes into the bathroom to take naked pictures of herself. Oh, so I we, I was going to give a benefit of the doubt from what I heard on it, where it's like, okay, it's a document, no. not a documentary, but like a mockumentary exposing the sexualization of kids and how culture is like leaning towards that. So I, I was kind of like, and yeah, from what maybe. I've heard. Well, no, from what I've heard from like the reviews and uh, like uh, articles and everything, it does paint uh, pedophilia in a negative light, yeah. but then it still shows yeah. it. So yeah. I don't that's really what, care. That's First of all, it threw me point. off because it was like, I wanted to give it a chance, but it just, it felt really excessive from what I read and I did uh, too no, much. So first of all, it, Mr. Did you hear about this controversy at all? Hear or see uh, any of it? So I actually... I actually watched the movie. Me too. Ooh, okay. so I was, was going to make a video. I was going to make a video discussing it. So mm. I saw everything you, that was... Are you joining us at the moment from your jail cell? I did. <laughs> God damn it. No, the, the reason... I don't know if you guys saw uh, like a list floating around Twitter that mm -hmm. pointed out some of the scenes. Yeah. If you guys saw... Because no. some of the shit sounded fucking bizarre. So I went to go watch the movie. Because I just wanted to know, okay, is this actually in the movie? Is this how crazy of a movie Netflix has allowed on their streaming service? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the results are in. Uh, there was only really 
one thing that was incorrect on that list if you guys have seen it yeah it was the uh, I, i've seen the list and the only thing that i haven't seen or not seen the only thing i haven't heard confirmation of is naked uh, the uh naked breasts of one of the children yeah but the movie Wait, is actually well, yeah, there's, no way they'd, what's, there's no way they'd be able to show that yeah. so this came out yeah, of that's the, what i'm true. saying that's the one that wasn't true right you bet they tried <laughs> yeah, I, you you bet your fucking ass i was watching that thinking i was watching with my girlfriend we just sat and half-heartedly just and got more and more disgusted as it went on but you just know the directors and the film crew was like oh okay you know guys we need to film that scene again this time just a little more skin and, and all that shit god knows what takes they had to actually cut out of this turd but so before this mm. was released all the fucking media people all the verifies the usual blue check suspects on twitter were like oh no you're just all prejudicious a prejudicial and you you wait until it's released it's actually against the exploitation of children yada yada and then it comes out and it's actually way fucking worse than anyone actually would thought it would be you know that one <laughs> clip i don't know if you guys have seen it where at the end of the movie they all dance as a dance group in their little uh, whatever oh, bikinis mm -hmm. that's the only clip that's not that, even the worst the part i've seen and it was enough that is, that's not even it's the not. worst fucking part of the movie there to me the worst part Hell. was there's a scene where this girl the main character basically she is getting some something like an exorcism like her grandma yeah, so she's and being her, exercised yeah she, like her grand so <laughs> let me set the scene sounds fucked up but this 10 year old is wearing nothing but a white t-shirt that's important and panties okay and her mother and grandmother keep throwing water on her and getting her wet now you have a child in a white wet t-shirt and then she starts sh uh, slowly shaking because you know exorcism and such and then she devolves into twerking all wet and steamy as the camera like pans around this little child and her body is she wait what how is that uh, um like it's, jesus jackson I, I don't it's speaking the, against no, the, it's speaking against the sexualization of children and if you don't see that yeah, that's then what i don't wrong. get how, how is that speaking against the sexualization it's you're like, just sexualizing pe pe her <laughs> people made this comparison on twitter it's like you know if you wanted to show that giving children drugs is bad you wouldn't inject a child with heroin and then film it and then go see it's bad yeah don't do it it's like you, re but, you so release what was, the, what was the point of that scene exorcism so the whole, not drive any point home so the story all. okay so it was just to get a a, the, a girl wet like a it, throw water it's on an it. excuse the second that scene started i i turned to my girlfriend and said watch this is just gonna be an excuse to zoom in on their tits or something and lo and behold of course i was right the story of the movie is basically there's this girl who's growing up in a super conservative muslim family but she really wants to fit in at school with this other group of girls and they're uh, in a dance competition and she's just so fascinated by this world of uh, you know not conservative but like sexually liberal women on youtube that she watches and then she really gets into it and wants to be one of them so she learns how to twerk and dress like a whore and the thing is like it, it's so all of those gross scenes aside it's not even a good movie in its own right removed all those scenes and it's still a shitty movie it's so fucking boring and terribly done the girls not no one in the movie is likable mr i don't know if you noticed but the girls are all a bunch of fucking bully pieces of shit they're terrible yes and then the main character towards the end she goes full black swan and starts assassinating her competition pushing she pushes like one of the fat chicks <laughs> into water and then watches her drown for like a minute and then you know the girl starts floating and she's like oh, okay i guess i didn't kill her it's a shit movie. Well, that sounds kind of good. It's I like a that shit aspect movie. of the movie, maybe. And you can't tell and me there's, there's no follow up with that girl, by the way. She's just she's stuck just in a yeah, watering poster yeah. at the end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and the movie, the movie, here's the supposed messages. As they're as they're filming this dance scene with them, and the camera zooms in, you know, it's fucking ten year old girls doing the splits and such, and the camera's zooming in on their fucking camel toes right up their assholes. And then, but then. This takes like, this is like a five minute fucking scene, but then you get like a two second shot of the audience and they're disgusted. They're just, they're like, oh, this is wrong. This is bad. And that, I guess, is supposed to convey to you, the viewer, that see these girls, they're just victims of the whatever the fuck of sexualization of children. And isn't this disgusting? Well, how, how is it accomplished by showing the audience being disgusted? Well, the worst part like about that scene specifically is that, uh, spoiler alert, uh, she ends up the main character, the main girl ends up realizing like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I should go be just a regular little girl. And she ends up skipping rope at the end of the movie. But <laughs> my uh, my thought was, why did you have to show us two whole minutes of this fucking dance routine to get to exactly. that realization? 
You already finished the scene. Multiple. Was, and, <laughs> does it, and multiple dance routine beforehand, right? I mean, there's like f four different dance scenes in this movie in addition to that one wet t-shirt contest with a 10-year-old that they hold, uh, held. It's like, what is the point? You could have just... Yeah, she should, she should have probably realized that after the uh, wet t-shirt exorcism, to be honest. Her, her own grandparents and parents sexualizing her. I, I don't know what up. the fuck is wrong with these parents that they were just, I guess, sitting there on set and watching this and being like, oh yeah, this is artsy, this is yeah, good. That's the and then I keep hearing, oh, but the director is a woman, how, how can that be? Yeah, because fucking women can be sick fucks too. They can be assholes. Have you been anywhere in the real world? Just, I don't know, It's the movie fucking sucks in its own right, but on top of it you have softcore child porn. But it's art. So this is something I, f I feel everyone that gave it has an 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. Of course it does. I of feel, course it does. I yeah. I feel everyone that gave this movie that kind of positive review needs to be investigated 100%. <laughs> it's, it's these fucking, I mean, the, it's the, these well, elites, you know, fucking reviewers. It's the journalists. Normal people all fucking hate this movie, but they, I don't know why the journalists are doing this. Leave it to fucking American journalists to turn this into a right versus left political issue. Like, it's fucking pedophilia. Yeah, Just say it I've sucks. Well. What the hell? I've seen now countless articles, like literally dozens of articles saying that if you don't like this movie, it must be because you're a right wing QAnon conspiracy theorist nut. I'd also like to make note of the 36 reviews that are extremely positive, 30 are men. So <laughs> just wanted to put that out there, I guess. Motherfucker. Hang on, I want to find <laughs> one one reviewer. I sent this to my... Let me see if I can find this. It was this guy reviewing it and everybody thought that it was satire, but it's not. Oh, the guy that was talking about how he became attracted to kids after watching it, I saw that. <laughs> no! Yeah. Wait, yeah. what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. Wait, what? There's a YouTuber who made a review and he's like, you know what? At the hang end on, of the day, on. the kids are hot. I, I got it. Uh, do you Here. have a clip? Yeah, I have the clip. Here, this is... He speaks... Kind, he sounds kind of retarded, but it's a one-minute clip here. Am I meant to be hearing anything? <laughs> are you not? No. Nope. Yeah, he's not really making any good points. Was <laughs> <laughs> huh. the video in sign language or something? <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me try maybe Edge. I don't know why Firefox isn't playing it. Oh, I better not have to be logged in to view this. Do you hear, do you not hear this? Well, nope. No. no. Charlie, do you, do you want to just go over it? What the fuck? Quickly. I mean... The summary is that there's a YouTuber who reviewed oh, the I'm movie. Oh, I'm retarded. No. Oh my god, no. Sorry, I'm retarded. Here we go. And, um... My bad. They're pretty hot. And, you know, you can say whatever you want about me. It's not my fault. <laughs> I didn't make them do that. They did that. <laughs> uh, that's the point. That's the whole point of the movie. Is that you're supposed to be sitting there thinking, look at the blonde one. You're supposed to be sitting there holding these two thoughts in your head, and one, that these are kids, and the other, that they're hot. And um, fucking Shane Dawson? <laughs> I don't even know if you're supposed to be comfortable with that. It's more like you're just supposed to be informed that you are capable of that, and that you feel that way. And um, I already knew that, but... Uh, I, I think it's a good thing to put that out there. Uh -huh. This has to be set. This has to be satire. Or it something, isn't. Right? It isn't. No, everyone no, thought this was satire. Quasi satire. First of all, satire. No one would make satire like this where they show their face and pretend to be a pedophile. To this guy, I went to his channel. In the comment section, he he's there saying it's not satire. This wasn't meant to make me look good. I was just trying to make a point. It isn't. He went this on a real. podcast to defend his position as well right after I watched I, it. But, but, I see but his point, People do a whole lot of random sh Wait, whoa, whoa, Andrew. No, let me, let me explain. No. I see what he's trying to get at. I understand that he's trying to defend the filmmaking where it's like, yeah, you're supposed to be disgusted. That's the point. But he's defending the wrong angle. He's like, it's good that they're showing sexy children because it makes you think they're sexy. That's not, that's not at all a good thing. No, it's That's like, not what he should be defending as a good thing. I mean, look, they're just 
yes, I get the point he's trying to make, but you're not really supposed to find children sexy to begin with, even if they're twerking exactly. in front of you. It's like, oh, I was it's, so disgusted by myself. It's totally fine myself. if a movie. It's totally fine if a movie uses like. I don't know, imagery to a degree that it gets the point across and shows you how fucked it is or puts the idea in your head. But when it's as excessive as I've read it is and he's saying, yeah, I thought the kids were hot the whole time. That's that's not what it should be doing. That's just child porn. That's not effective filmmaking. It's just fucking child porn. And no so, one's supposed ugh. to be sitting there like, oh, the blonde one's really hot. Yeah. Exactly. So what were your thoughts walking away from the movie, Gigi? I saw I you see the message the director is trying to convey, right? But there is just so much fucking unnecessary footage throughout the entire movie. Yeah. Where I'm like, okay, I can't justify this, even with the point you're trying to make. This doesn't need to be in the movie. I don't know what kind of strategy this is, where it's just like, oh, it's an I don't I don't know. I'm gonna put this in your face so you can see it and it's not like, um, like kind of like uh, what you were saying earlier. It's just, it's fucked. There's so many scenes, even that aren't on that list that are going around, that it's, are fucked. This is like the PETA of pedophilia, isn't it? Where PETA will go around euthanizing dogs and then like film themselves doing it and be like, see, see the suffering of animals when you own them or something. That's a, like s filming child porn and then being like, isn't this bad? Now just stop. I honestly, I'm, yeah, it I don't seems know. very weird to be like, don't sexualize kids. And here's a whole movie dedicated to doing just that. And just a further yeah, giving people like a, a legal avenue of accessing pretty disgusting content. And again, the most baffling and, and part like of this getting is away with it. Why do you have to defend this journalists? Why? What is the point? Why is this hill really? Even this hill you have to die on because Orange Man bad or whatever the fuck. Like every single review I've read of this, someone has to mention QAnon and how only right wing people are against yeah. us. What the fuck are you talking about? It's not just right wingers. Are you nuts? Everyone's grossed us by this, except apparently you guys. Who maybe the fucking Twitter verified I've thing means verified pedophile. I've seen critics talk about just supporting the message in general, but that doesn't mean you have to support this film. Yeah, just, absolutely. You can you can use that film's negativity to as a jumping off point to then provide your own arguments. Dude, the message it's not but like then they're just they're just praising the movie. It's not as if the message is so out there and oh this was really important to say. Who the fuck is out there supporting the sexualization of children? Was there anyone like yeah? Oh, you, you know, I, I, no, 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 there's, no. There's, absolutely, yeah, in Hollywood yeah. Hang on, there's there is like, a okay. There's a. Fair There's a Hollywood. point to be made on current media and current trends and how they and present children. About, yeah, how children yeah. are being. You see it in TikTok absolutely. as well. Yeah. Stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, TikTok is big as Abs well. Yeah. Absolutely. What I mean is, there's no one on earth who like thinks that's an amazing thing that like a seven year old looks at WAP, pedophiles the music do. video. <laughs> yeah, pedophiles do. Yeah, these, and coincidentally, <laughs> they all turned out to have uh, journalism degrees. Apparently, what the hell? Just yeah. stop. God. Don't die on that goddamn hill. I do know a hill to die on, though, Andrew. Mm. Oh, yeah? yeah? Would that happen to be Ship Station? It would. Oh, tell I us. can tell you about Ship Station. The holiday season is right around the corner, and this year we know that people will be shopping online more than ever before. And when you're selling online, you're getting ready for a massive amount of orders to be shipped out quickly, and it can be tough. That's why you should choose ShipStation.com, the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. In just a few clicks, you're managing orders, printing out discounted shipping labels, and getting your products out fast. The result is happier holidays for you and your customers. ShipStation helps online sellers get orders out quickly, saving money on shipping costs and keeping their customers happy. No matter what platform you're selling on, whether it's Amazon or Etsy or even your own website, ShipStation will bring all your orders into one simple interface. It's no wonder that ShipStation is the number one choice of online sellers. You will ship more in less time. Look at that. That is a literal perfect positive ratio. Ship more, less time. It's so simple. 
Right now, the official podcast listeners can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use offer code OFFICIAL. Make sure your business is ready to meet the demands of a massive online shopping season. Get started at ShipStation.com today with a free 60-day period using offer code OFFICIAL. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage. Type in official at ShipStation.com. ShipStation.com. Make ship happen. Aha. Nice. <laughs> Fun little pun there to, to wrap it all up. Nice. So if you're selling some stuff, especially with uh, holidays in, what, three months, now's the time to get started. Get all your stuff together. Get all your ship together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you just stole I, that joke. I did. <laughs> Wasn't that the same joke? They can't sue me for that, I don't think. <laughs> now is the time with ShipStation.com using the code official at the top of the website. 60 days free. All right. Wonderful. Mr. GG, if you had to sell something, if you had to push something <laughs> onto your audience, what do you think <laughs> you would sell to them? What What do you feel down in your heart as a product you could offer in a fun or interesting way? Um, are we still in the ad? No. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, it you depends want. on if you want to be. Uh... <laughs> Offer code official, guys. You yeah. are here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! You'll sell your promo codes. Fuck yeah. Alrighty. Where were we? You were about to tell us what you'd ship. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> no. well, do you not have any topics this week, Jackson? Uh, uh, no, not really. Oh, other than, uh, well, Gigi, you've met Chris Hansen. Right? Uh, I, I've, I've, I've spoken to him, yes. What was he like? Tell us about Chris Hansen. And his cock. Uh, oh, Chris <laughs> Hansen, sorry. For some Wrong reason, Chris Evans. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's pretty much what you see online. You know, he's just, a, he's just a journalist all around. Anytime I spoke to him, even off camera, sounded exactly the same, same voice. He's not putting on a front. That's just him. Not but really is it him, it. or do you think he's just so rehearsed or, or like, I don't know, dedicated to the art of being a journalist that that's just how he naturally presents himself anytime he's around people? I mean, yeah, I would assume being a journalist for, journalist for so long, he's just gotten into the, the to this robotic state where he's just yeah. always Chris Hansen, no matter where mm-hmm. he is. Mm. So when you met, he was like, hi, I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Every time he sees you. He would say that to the pedophiles, yes. So. <laughs> that's, how, that's how Gigi met him. I heard you watch Cuties. <laughs> you just know that these days, if that show happened today, one of those guys would, would just ask him to come on his podcast or something. Yeah. <laughs> I love him, man. He was the original. He was the inventor of bringing receipts. I've been watching some uh, To Catch a Predator again, and just it's so yeah, it's so funny. it's so fucking wholesome and amazing. <laughs> just the way he he's as cool as a cucumber while the fucking pedophiles they're sitting sweating, going like, uh, "Are you her dad, sir? Like, wh- are you FBI? What is going on?" I I thought she was eighteen. He's like, "No, you didn't. You said she's twelve, and you want to fuck her." Yeah. Love Chris right Hansen. here it says you. Uh, she said she was twelve. Like he has, he has like a binder full of receipts. <laughs> he does. As he, said, he always has like. A, a, but, oh, and then, <laughs> sorry, go it's ahead. It's always interesting to me how they immediately fold as soon as he says, "Well, I have the sheets right here," and they're like, "Oh, well, yeah, she, she said she's twelve. No, it goes. They n- three I never ways. saw them fold. No, j- they, so Charlie they do goes. Fo- well, three a lot of ways. Them folded. One, they immediately fold and admit it, and they're like, "I'm so sorry, sir. Am I in trouble?" Number two is they deny it. They're like. I thought she was, I thought she told me she was 58. She looks 58. I don't know. And then number three, my favorite are the ones where like they peek in, they immediately see Chris and they bolt out and they get tased by the cops <laughs> without even saying anything. <laughs> That's the ones I take a I shot to. I haven't seen any of those yet. <laughs> oh, I haven't Ch- seen those. The ones, I've, Charlie, the I, ones I've mainly seen are them going like, oh, it's just role play. No, no, no. I was coming here to make sure she yeah. was safe because it's dangerous yeah. for a little girl to be a <laughs> hero. <laughs> So Charlie, I've been I've been streaming it with my girlfriend. You should join us. I I take a shot every time they claim that they were just here to help the girl. It's basically the yes, cuties argument, isn't it? Is oh, 
I wasn't here to molest the children. I was here to tell her that molesting children is bad. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the cuties oh, defense. <laughs> molesting children. <laughs> I, like that the, I like that the stunt kids they use, well, the stunt boy that they use is like a 35-year-old man. <laughs> yeah. Stunt They're, boy. <laughs> The decoys, yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they can never <laughs> find a young-looking adult male. because they all, With the girls, you kind of... It's like they find a little person or a midget or whatever they are. They find just stunted what? girls who are three feet tall. And you go, okay, you know, from 100 yards away, you could maybe mistake her as a 12-year-old to lure these <laughs> idiots in. But the boy kids they always pick, yeah. it's like 30-year-old men with a gigantic fridge frame <laughs> going, like, hey, come in, dude. My parents aren't home. Where are you going, dude? <laughs> You guys, you guys saw the me, my mummy, and daddy clip, right? Yeah, that, that was the best one with a thirty year. He looks like a thirty year old balding man as a decoy. <laughs> <laughs> like he's he's got an engineering degree. He, he, he sits at the table. He's like the the uh, the, the pedophile says. Oh, so who lives here? And the decoy <laughs> says in the the worst fucking voice. Oh, you know, just me, my mummy, and daddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst fucking line. Like, what kind of improv skill is that? Not only is he a 30-year-old man, he's just not a good actor. That's the best you could come up Jackson's with. Jackson's selling him in a weird way, though. He doesn't look like a balding man. He looks like an actual, like, basketball player. He's, like, six foot <laughs> five. Yeah. He's in good shape. He does. He's got facial hair. <laughs> And then it was an interesting strategy. Like yeah. the smarter thing is what they so sometimes instead what they'll do is just they have Dell, big fan of Dell. They just give her like a binder for her breasts and they make her wear baggy clothing or something. And then she pretends to be a boy. She has like a baseball cap and such and waves them in. Like that's better than hiring fucking LeBron James to do, to be your decoy. <laughs> it just doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> How much trouble do you think they get in if they put actual children in and mom's I, way? So not to, <laughs> like they just hire I don't know. That, to do it? That's what I was wondering. There, there has to be some sort of a legal liability issue with you know putting children oh, in yeah. harm's yeah, way yeah, or something sure. because at the Delivering end of the day, them to pedophiles, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, you know, because at the end of the day, they are actual criminals, and I guess you're not supposed to like expose kids to them or something. Fuck me, what was I about to I say, mean, though? Well, the, the, weird, the weird part about that is, though, in the Hanson vs. Predator series, when they were chatting with them, they sent them photos of actual underage kids. Oh, whoa. Really? Wait, no, yeah. No, wait, wait. Yeah. What, like, naked? No, 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 not naked. But they sent them just, like, selfies, like, oh. even photos in bikinis, though, as well, of hmm. actual underage children. Hmm. So wait, do these children know that their pictures <laughs> are being as used far, to lure as far, <laughs> as far as I know, yes, but that was that's not what To Catch a Predator did back in the day. I mean, to be fair, yeah. so well, well, to be fair, I mean, if, you know, if someone gave me that opportunity, like you want to help bring down some pedophiles, sure, use my mugshot. I don't care. You know, I will say though, To Catch a Predator, prime example of, or maybe the only example of wholesome police brutality, because those fucking losers they're all just these chubby complete dorky loser fucking men who when they come out the door they're like already pissing their pants and the cops are like put up your hands well get on the ground blah, 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 blah. and like 10 of them descend on that Bring one little tank. idiot <laughs> as he's like <laughs> shitting his pants in front of them like, begging for mercy and they're like oh he's got a gun taser blah, blah. and they just fucking kick him in the gut and shit and arrest him it's just it's like the one example of police brutality where you're like yeah yeah i think he has a gun you guys maybe you should shoot him Tase him some more. <laughs> He's resist. Stop resisting arrest. As the guy's just. He's got McDonald's. <laughs> 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 it's just fucking tasing sixty-year-olds. I love it. I, I always like that prep stage where the cops are like this man's unpredictable. He could do anything. He could be anywhere and anyone <laughs> yeah. at any time. And then he and walks the in the door and it's like he's got like a pizza slice little- and grease stains. <laughs> The little interview scenes with the cops or the police chief and they're like, well, we're dealing with some dangerous individuals here. You never know what they're going to do. Dude, I know what they're going to do. Like, he's going to come out, look like a deer in the headlights, piss himself. And then, like, his legs are going to be shaking so much he's going to fall on the ground before you even tell him to. It's just your 10 buddies there descending on him is just extra. That's just fun. (laughs) And then fucking Chris Hansen with that little twinkle in his eye when the pedophile asks him, like, am I going to be in trouble? Like, can I leave? And Chris, Chris goes... Yeah, you're free to leave. I'm not. Co- I'm not a cop. I'm yeah, not going to do know, anything. His to. favorite yeah. line is, "That's not up to me." Yeah, that's, that's not, not up, up to me. me. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <such> a- <laughs> 
It's such a badass line. I still love the ghillie suit. Everyone's seen that clip, but that is still oh, such yeah. a good clip with the <laughs> officer in a ghillie suit. Of a kill. Yeah. Yeah. They should up it it's, the, it's like the US, uh, what's that? US sniper coffee faster. It's like that personified. Like this random <laughs> fucking tree comes out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> the gun it gets the him f- in a headlock. Fucking. Th- yeah, yeah, so good. The fucking bushes. Yeah. All the cops come out of <laughs> a they, fucking clown make, car. Huh? Do they make sniper tasers? Because they should. As soon as they leave the door, they just snipe them from afar. <laughs> Tase them in the fucking forehead. Tase them. From like a football <laughs> yeah. field away. They should booby trap yeah. the house as soon as he steps on the door mat. It just opens a <laughs> trap door. <laughs> like, a, like a snare trap, so it wraps around his foot and he swings up and yeah. he's hanging from the as, ceiling. As, as soon as that happens, the, like bullhorns go up and pedophile, pedophile, <laughs> pedophile starts blaring in the neighborhood. <laughs> and the cops come in with like paint balls and just shoot him right in the face. <laughs> they hit him like a pin- Pinata with sticks. They're <laughs> blindfolded. <laughs> oh, awesome. Why don't we make to catch a predator? Yeah, we should make our own to catch a predator. We could do the Looney Tunes traps where like a boxing glove comes out of a painting or something that they look at. Yeah, it's like we paint a we paint a painting of a small child that's really detailed, and they try to run into it like Wiley e. Coyote, and they just slam into a wall. <laughs> we do a Wiley e. Coyote. We just set up a gigantic screen and play cuties, and then just lure out the neighborhood oh pedophiles in a fifty mile radius. <laughs> You know, I, people oh, always send man. me. Th- there is a bunch of channels on YouTube that do like vigilante the stuff. Oh, those basically. are terrible, though. Those yeah, are they, always the worst. Yeah. not only because they're, they're like fun. so over the top fake, they're obviously fake. But I, I like you could tell there's an air of arrogance around the people actually doing it. Like they have a hero complex or something. And that's always really off putting to me. Yeah, plus it's just not the same without Chris Hansen and them sitting in the house and him bringing the receipts and reading their cringy ass lines to them like, Twink Toilet, that's you, isn't it? Yeah, you said you want this five-year-old boy to effecate on your chest. It's right here. You said this, didn't you? This is so good. Uh. So, Gigi, you did... Like, you did a whole series on To Catch a Predator, didn't you? The the Predator, Predator Chronicles? Right. Yes, yes, I did. Yeah. So I, I, I want to know, who is uh, this? Might be a loaded question, but who is your favorite predator? <laughs> like, what is the the pinnacle of predator? Per I've se? been asked this a shit ton, so it's fine. Um, okay. Favorite predator. Yeah. Are you guys familiar with? Uh, I don't know if you know my name, Marvin Lackham. No. Is he I'm the? Not sure. Is he Pappy? Is he the one that likes to go by Pappy? Pappy. No, Say that, it that again? wasn't that Marvin. Was what? One, right. That was. Oh, that was Hanson versus Predator. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Mark. Oh, yeah. No, I, I know what you're talking about. That guy's name is uh, Joshua. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Joshua. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know. Um, no, no, no. This this is an old guy from To Catch a Predator, and he came in naked. Oh, oh. yeah. Uh, the cat one? That yeah, guy. yeah. The, the, guy, the guy who wanted to fuck the cat. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, okay. right. Wait, so, so the, I don't know what about who this is at all. Can you give okay, like a yeah, recap? Yeah, GG. No, basically Go he over. walks in, well, <laughs> during the chat beforehand, they're like, oh, to prove like, when they're pretending to be a kid, they're like, oh, to prove you really, you're really about this, come in naked. Which? So he jumps in, <laughs> takes off his clothes, and Chris Hansen immediately like just comes to the door, and he's like, yeah, why don't you grab that towel right over there, and I'll uh, put that on real quick. And while they're talking, he's like, hey, I, I wasn't going to do anything. And then Chris just pauses for a second, he's like, Marvin, you're naked. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? <laughs> you got all full intention. I, I, lo- I also love that. So that's what the decoy people, not but, the decoy uh, people. The, the, the cat. The cops and the, well, to catch a predator team, they tell the pedophiles uh, to do certain things to prove intent. To, to prove intent. Yeah, yeah, to show like, oh, he actually meant it. So to, to you know, entrap him, f- not entrap, that's a wrong word, but like to really demonstrate in front of the law that this guy was intending to fuck a child, we're going to tell him to bring us beer and drinks <laughs> and also strip naked and do a handstand and walk into the door like backwards if you really mean to fuck a child and they all do it, <laughs> these fucking dummies. The other fun part, Give Mr. Chris this is... secret handshake and then you can fuck a child. <laughs> that's in the chat. <laughs> I don't know if you guys did this, but... The original team that Dateline worked with during the original To Catch a Predator Perverted is Justice. Perverted Justice. Yeah, and they have all of the chat logs available online still. And so you can watch these guys and then in real time uh, read along, basically, like a read along story. All the shit that they said. So was the cat fucker um, the, the worst predator then? Like, the did worst? he have the most no. disgusting? No. 
No, 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 not the most. No, not even close. Even though whoa, whoa, whoa. he is a it was even cat. more disgusting than like he he tried to force the uh, decoy to fuck a cat, right? Yes, yeah, correct. There is a guy. Who, Still not the most disgusting. The most disgusting I wow. remember is the guy who brought his own child with him. Ugh. Remember that one, Mister? I don't know I his don't name. Know. I don't know which one's worse there. No. I, well, yeah, I guess the child. I one. mean, yeah. It's like he he literally brought his uh, three year old son or something holding his hand waddled into the house to have fucking three uh, a threesome with children. Oh yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, when he's getting arrested, and they take away. So he's like, please give me back my son. I haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> that one's good. I think there was a guy. Well, there's a few that come to mind, but there was a dude who legitimately sounded like a pimp for underage kids because he was trying to get this girl that he was meeting up with to meet up with underage girls that he already ha had like captive or was in contact Whoa. with. So he was trying to, I don't know, he had like legitimately like a pedophile ring going on in a way. Yeah. And thankfully that dude was fucking busted. There was another guy who just like the cat fucker was trying to have an entire bestiality orgy with the dogs in the house. Motherfuckers. Um, it's yeah no some some of the chats are so i mean well they're all fucked but some of them are really fucked there are i just looked up marvin lacken he apparently got married a couple well not even a couple of years ago a year ago what oh, the hell congrats. hey how old's the bride yeah. hey, she's she's <laughs> older than he is and My a little God. bit taller turned his life around yeah, yeah. does she look desperate I because who the fuck wants to marry that guy I have no fucking idea, man. But like, she's she's good looking. I, Whoa! I, wait, really? Yeah, here. I mean, I'll drop it in here. Do you think? Hmm. Do you think? I don't know. Do you think pedophiles get the same kind of women fangirls that serial killers get? Obviously, I I assume to a lesser extent. But do you think there's still women that exist like that? I like. I don't know. For child predators? But there, I mean, there's yeah, always know, someone crazy. This guy's this cr what? always someone crazy enough, but yeah. Do you think Wait, he discloses super his... attractive. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, actually. Do you think he did discloses his past in this situation? You have to know his past. This man walked around naked on national TV trying to fuck a child and a cat. Like, how do you not know that? Yeah, what the, the fuck? Just husband. Google the name, surely. Yeah, literally, Who? what woman doesn't at least once Google the man she's with? Or like, aren't there signs like, oh yeah, I want to move, honey, just not in a, you know, hundred mile radius of any schools. I can't do that. You know how it is. <laughs> no, no, we can't live there. The there's, there's, ch there's children in that neighborhood. Yeah, they'll be loud. <laughs> uh, this, no, this, this is, it's not an ankle monitor, baby. It's just jewelry. I know it beeps sometimes when I pass a kindergarten with the car, but that's it. <laughs> like, I know, I know girls like some girls like bad boys or whatever like bad guys with criminal history but a pedophile yeah that yeah, seems like, like a, a kind convicted of pedophile that's kind of the criminal history that i don't think a lot of people like that much would be my guess that even <laughs> criminals don't like pedophiles in prison why would the chicks who are into criminals like pedophiles they're the lowest on the hierarchy yeah i love the way he tried to force a 12 year old girl to fuck a cat <laughs> mm. The way really he entered that me. room without any clothes on, it was it took my breath away. Oh, I yeah, maybe it's not the fact that he's a pedophile, maybe it's the fact that he's been on national TV and has met Chris oh. Hansen. Oh she's a gold digger. He just mm. didn't tell her what NBC why he was on TV. TV. Yeah. Oh <laughs> it's just a picture of him with Chris Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> he just posted that to her. <laughs> maybe he just downloaded the episode and did his own dubbing, like, oh you're Chris Hansen, right? I always wanted to meet you, and Chris is like, Oh, I'm your biggest fan too. I'm glad you're naked. <laughs> Marvin, you're naked. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and thank uh, God for ExpressVPN. Thank God. You know who I ma who yes. I marry is ExpressVPN, which I use even right now because it doesn't even slow down my internet. I usually always praise how you know you can change your region with ExpressVPN. If you wanna, I don't know, use an Uzbekistani IP address for whatever content is on Netflix in Uzbekistan, you can do that. But because it has servers in almost every country on Earth, you can also just use a server in your own country. What is that good for? Well, first of all, preserves your privacy still. Two, if you're a gamer playing video games, obviously using a server in your own country uh, is also going to affect your ping way less, which is also very low. ExpressVPN 
keeps you safe. You guys know the spiel here. I don't really have to praise it way more than I already always do. You get the idea. Keep your privacy. Watch whatever content in whatever country you want. Uh, installation is the easiest fucking shit on the planet. You literally just download the thing and hit a red button. And it connects you. You can set it up to auto-connect. You can set it up on everything. Your phone, your console, your you know, computer, obviously, your router. If you want to just skip the middleman. And that way, if you have guests over, they're all also automatically connected to your... Uh, VPN. So ExpressVPN, they've been loyal supporters of our podcast for a while now, and they've been loyal supporters of people's privacy for even longer than that. So if you go to expressvpn.com slash official, you can get three free months of the yearly plan, which is cheap to begin with. Literally just one time payment to you guys. You get uh, three free months with our code uh, slash official. Just a one-time payment, you guys. One-time payment, one-time hit the red button, protect it forever. You're good. Surf the web comfortably. You don't want to give all these websites your information, trust me, it's not good. ExpressVPN.com slash official. The only official VPN of the official podcast. Nice. I think you pretty much summarized it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... I, I, I really find uh, like To Catch a Predator and Handsome vs. Predator extremely interesting because Handsome vs. Predator was kind of Chris's um, like uh, there was a period where he went through a divorce and he kind of fell out of the graces of, you know, uh, the, the American people. And so this was his way of like kind of bouncing back into the industry, correct? So it, it's kind of interesting to me that he chose YouTube as the platform to do that in. Hanson vs. Predator wasn't a YouTube show. Well, no, because he it was with Crime Watch Daily, so it was it was on television oh. too. But there was clips; the clips were on YouTube as well. Oh, I just thought it was a YouTube channel. My bad. All right, well that's so. Wait, it it was on like like a U.S. household television. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was on NBC. And what, it just wasn't as popular. No. It also uh, wasn't probably not on television, but the clips did great on YouTube. It is Chris mm. Hansen. Well, then, yeah, I, I thought he just kind of fizzled out, like from uh, all all of the actual big TV stations. It's, like they they just didn't take him seriously. It's not anymore. the same. No offense to Mr. Chris Hansen, there, still my hero, but it, it just he doesn't have the same twinkle in his eye. He kind of looks washed up and. You know, he has a big fat gut, he has, he's all wrinkly, and he, sound, he just doesn't seem to enjoy it as much. And it, it kind of did feel like a gig he took just for the sake of having a job again. I mean, he did fall on some hard times, apparently, where all his checks were bouncing and such. That had yeah, to do with the Kickstarter, too. For fraud? Was, it, was he being investigated for fraud? I'm not sure. Maybe Mister would know that. Probably. He hadn't. Uh, he he hadn't paid, if I remember correctly, uh, for the Kickstarter. You know, he had rewards set up, and it was a bunch of merchandise. And he took very long to even send out that merchandise, like longer than expected for everybody. And I guess uh, the issue was that he hadn't actually paid that invoice for the merchandise that he had ordered. Mm. So that's why he got in hot water. So. But then he owes money to both the merchandising people and, I guess, the patrons. So I'm, he's just further in debt at that point. I don't know how the hell he got out of it, but... He, he yeah, busted pedophiles. Kind of, That's how he got out it, of it, there you I, go. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The judge just dropped all the charges. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I miss him, man. I, I want him back. I would say if I was a billionaire, this is what I would do with my money is just re start that show but properly on an actual tv station with all the production and all the hoopla bring back perverted justice bring back dell who i think currently has fallen unfortunately also low she as far as i know dell is now working at twitter and their trust and safety mm -hmm. team um yeah i mean and if chris hansen honestly if he was too old i'd hire bill burr i don't care if i have to pay him a million bucks or a hundred million dollars if I was rich enough, I'd do it. I'd hire him to just make the fucking fun out of uh, the pedophiles walking in there. It would be such a great show. Chris Hansen himself, though, like, you definitely need Bill Burr, because Chris Hansen, from what I've seen with the way he behaves on, like, YouTube and Twitter, he seems to, like, really have something going on. Like, he's got, like, some kind of weird vendetta against people at the moment. 
Like he was what do you mean? What do you mean? He was, I don't remember the exact thing, but Mudahar, for example, yeah. had some beef with Chris Hansen. I don't remember what about, but he was like flexing like a trophy that he had or something. Hmm. He'd go on Twitter posting a trophy, be like, well, I have this trophy and there's some YouTuber or something that's not happy with something I've done. I don't remember exactly what the meltdown is, but he's been doing some weird shit. Do you guys think he kind of resents being typecast as the pedophile hunter? Because at the end of the day, he was an actual... I think he actual... typecast himself as that. He did, yeah. I mean, he leaned into it, but it, maybe he's just burned out by it because he used to be an actual journalist or TV host or whatever, and then he just kind of became the pedophile guy. Pedophile hunter guy, sorry. Yeah, I've... but I, I don't think so. You go on GG, though. You I, I, I think he most. wanted to... I think he didn't want to be the predator guy because with his return when he was uh doing the hansen versus predator thing he was still covering other stories so i remember in his really early live streams on youtube everybody would ask him predator questions but he'd still try to like slowly like finagle in all his other stuff like yeah by the way i'm covering the opioid epidemic so uh there's this thing going on in south carolina where and it's just he you notice he was just kind of trying to get away from it but i think he realized mm. that the audience he had only gave a shit about to catch a predator and nothing else yeah, he needed to <laughs> he needed to play to his strengths in order to make enough money to buy merchandise or whatever, yeah i yeah. guess but you know you, yeah I, that kind of sucks i can see I feel for bad for him then. why he'd be upset by the you know just being turned into a sideshow guy basically you know, hey do the dance monkey catch some predators yeah for from us. what i've heard he, he he put in like what like 30 years of being like a pretty good uh investigative journalist for nbc right like it, it, it so. wasn't just the pedophile guy <laughs> but i mean he had fun in the originals man you can try I, you can tell and the team obviously loved it because they released like a hundred fucking episodes of it and the raw tapes oh my god i completely forgot about those two like the cops afterwards released all the interview footage with the pedophiles sitting in the interview cell or whatever you call it even those are fun to listen to oh what a great show agreed i wish we could have him on jackson what else do you have that isn't cock related. Uh, isn't what related? Cock. Um, well, I've got questions from the audience, if you want to do those. Sure. We could do that. All right. So, Boyman asks from Patreon, do you guys have any gay experiences at camp? <laughs> no. Does it have to be a camp? Mm, well. Yeah, gay camp. Uh, <laughs> any kind of recreational activity place, I guess, like a YMCA. I, I would count that. Oh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and speak for everyone here. I don't think any of us went to a fucking camp. I'm just going out on a limb. I don't. Well, just any any recreational activity. I don't think any of like us have done club. recreational activities, Jackson. Yeah, I've We're, never had recreational what? gay sex. I'm just saying. Yeah. I think I know our group. I know for a fact you didn't fucking do any kind of sports or anything, Jackson. <laughs> I did. I did when I was younger. Oh, and that's, yeah, what, that's actually what my story was going to be. I mean, and it was uh, like after a sporting event that we were all in the uh, locker room and we did the whole slap each other on the asses thing. And that was probably the gayest experience mm. at any kind of sports. Oh, I, I remember a super gay sports experience I had once. One time I played a sport and my pants fell down and every <laughs> every man said, Andrew, are you wearing me undies? And I said, well, oh, yes, oh, yes, Jesus I am. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Respect. I think I think it's inspired me to tell you the whole story. But first, yeah. let me describe yeah, the underwear I was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, please. They were like, oh. Andrew, where, where can I get me on these? Is there something? Did you exactly. get a discount somehow? <laughs> they kept asking me over and over. Is there a promo code I could use? And well, me undies grow on trees. No, seriously. They're made from irresistibly soft, natural fibers sourced from beechwood trees. And you know what natural fibers means? That means their micromodal is not only super soft, but it's breathable, light, and impossibly cozy. This is exactly what I said, by the way, during that sporting <laughs> event, word for word. Everything <laughs> MeUndies does is to help you feel truly comfortable from head to toe, from inside and outside. Because while you're wearing MeUndies, you'll feel so good wearing them. 
both physically and mentally, you'll go, God damn, I'm wearing me undies. What a great choice I've made today. Me undies will never let you run out of undies with the me undies membership. It's a, subscri a subscription service that sends new pairs right to your door and you can get site wide savings and exclusive sales. It's a no brainer as well because they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee to get that 100% satisfaction guarantee and 15% off your first order. Go to me slash official. That's me undies.com slash official M E U N D I E S.com slash official. I have about five pairs of them now myself and they are what I would call comfy. I think we all actually happen to wear mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And then your coach said, wow, that is amazing. And he went on his laptop to order. Uh, yeah. So. And, and all the fans at the sporting event started cheering me undies, me <laughs> undies. <laughs> it was an amazing day. I couldn't believe it happened that way, exactly as I described it. So go to meundies.com slash official for 15% off. Uh, yeah, that was my gay camp experience, I guess. Andrew, tell me about your actual gay experience. I'm sure you've had one. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's no way then, Andrew, weren't you the one who, was, who uh, until he was like 14 years old, pretended to be gay? Not till I was 14, Jesus. <laughs> until I oh. was like nine. Oh, sorry. No, that was that was like in fourth grade. And I was uh, I was at an after school camp and I I made two friends. And the joke was that haha, -ha, we're gay because back then, you know, you, so you know how back then the how insult, old were they, Andrew, the same age. Yeah, no. But so, okay. you know, you know how back then the insult was to call everything gay. It mm -hmm. was like like literally back in the 90s. If you didn't like something, it was gay. It was like, oh, that's so gay. Oh, you listen to Britney Spears? That's so gay. Oh, you watch this cartoon? That it's for gays. Like that was that was literally the slang. So we came up with the brilliant idea that if we just called ourselves gay, no one could insult us. I've told this story. <laughs> yeah, he told this story. Yeah, yeah I told the story. Has. So, okay, well, so I suppose story, that then. was uh, that was the gayest experience I've ever had. Just calling myself gay for like a whole year, <laughs> pretending you like boys. Yeah, kind of gay. Yeah. <laughs> But I've, t I've told that one, so you guys should go. How about you, mister? I don't think I can contribute to this, because I don't... I don't have a pair of MeUndies, and I also... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I also never pretended up. to be gay for a year. <laughs> You've never pretended to be gay? <laughs> uh, so your life's not complete yet, I see. I, I still got a lot of living to do, you know? <laughs> you can be a little gayer, I'm just saying. Hmm. Just go to camp, man. You're never too old. Kaya, do you have anything? No, not that I can remember. Kaya, I want to interrupt. Are you playing German children's music during this question? <laughs> uh, kinda. Which our <laughs> listeners can't hear. <laughs> it's just pop music. It's kind of gay, I'm sorry. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, this is the gayest thing Kai has done. Yeah, I also don't have Alrighty. a fun answer, sorry. Uh, all right. B asks, what would be the worst thing for the government to make illegal? Hmm. Eating? For personally or like in general? <laughs> Eating. Cool answer. Yeah. I'm gonna go with breathing. <laughs> oh, you stole mine. Oh. What happened to you boys? You've become so uncreative. <laughs> I was gonna say procreation if they just banned sex or any kind of breeding. Mm. That's a terrible answer. Yeah, do they... Well, it, 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 that's pretty bad. Do they mean specifically yeah, for us or in general? Because... What do you mean? Well, well the answers for in general are boring. Boys Sleeping, I mean, eating, boys fucking, like, who cares? Podcasting, it would ruin us. Yeah. <laughs> What? They just, yeah. Me Single undies. Off, they uh, just make the official podcast illegal. They ban me undies. We'd go under immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That would suck. So that's like a minor thing that they could ban is like underwear. It would suck shit. That would be Ugh. pretty terrible. You boys yeah. all. Have there been uh, any. Do you have any free balling adventures? Because I, I personally can't fucking do it, man. I hate not wearing underwear. I can't free ball. I can't even move. Nope. Like, if I'm naked for even a minute, I have to make sure that I'm kind of, like, standing still, because otherwise everything <laughs> flops around and hurts me. Yeah, yeah, it's not comfortable. Even just, even lying naked. I don't know how the fuck people do yeah, it. it Isn't it uncomfortable? Yeah. Your dick gets on your own yeah. way. 
like sleeping naked? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't do yeah. that either. Do you boys sleep naked? No. No, I did last way. night. I, I can't do I, it. I, I at, the, at the bare minimum, I need to wear something that holds like my shit in place at the bottom there. Yeah, just tape it or wait, something. Wait, wait. <laughs> Why? What, what do you do? Like you can. My big dick and bed, balls flop around everywhere, Jackson, and it's not comfortable to just have them like unsupported. Yeah, but you can just spread your legs. You can just spread your legs. I sleep on my side. It's still not comfy. It just lift your leg up. Just lay out like a starfish. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson was in a five point press. <laughs> Jackson nah, T poses I like to bed. My bowl squished. The only time I ever sleep naked was, is like if I just drink too much and at that point you pass out, then you can yeah. do it. But even then, at, at, what are you laughing for? What am I being judged here? No, it's just no, funny. No, 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 no. But yeah, no, what? even then, when you wake up and sober up, you you know you just briefly have to get up and put something on and lie back because you just it feels so bad to. I don't know. Have your bare ass touch your mattress. I don't like it. Yeah, well, that's that's what I was gonna say is the main issue is if like you get a shit stain <laughs> all over your bed. Oh, right. <laughs> that's probably that's probably like the main issue with sleeping naked. I would say. Well, you should be clean. Is accidentally with. shitting in the bed. Yeah, and that's the reason why I think freeballing is also pretty bad. Like you're giving, uh, like less. Less defense mechanisms against, like, if you shit yourself. Not just shitting, uh, it's just like, free we it's go just gonna, like, drop in your trousers. Shitting ourselves, but, you know, sweat, right? Or farting, or... You, yeah, you yeah, walk yeah, around yeah. a while in your jeans and you sweat, like, it just, it's it's disgusting enough when you feel your sweaty legs it's against risky. your jeans. It would be even worse if it's a sweaty ass against it. Now, now your fucking jeans is ass sweat soaked. It's gross. Oh, it's terrible, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to wear jeans literally every single day. Like, that was my absolute go-to. And then I started trying on shorts, and I went, what the fuck was I thinking living in Florida you doing this? You finally fucking yeah. stopped wearing jeans every day? I haven't seen yeah. you in a year, and you were still wearing jeans every I, single day. I'll wear them if the occasion calls for it, like if I'm going somewhere where I want to look nice or this yeah. and that. But no, I wear I wear shorts now I, everywhere. I've been telling you that for like a decade now, <laughs> that it's absolutely ridiculous to wear jeans I every know, day in Florida. You were Totally right. Oh yeah. my god, I can't believe it took you this goddamn long, man. Shorts are so awesome. angry. <laughs> but I look so good. I mean, the jeans looked good, but I, I said, for, you always argue, like, Charlie, no, this feels so much more comfortable than shorts. You just don't understand. It's just a lot better. Oh, I was totally wrong. Yeah. Yeah, you were. 100%. Right. Uh. But yeah, no, I don't freeze the question. Oh, yeah, free ball. Nah, I, you I can't up. stand it. I definitely don't free ball, no. Especially in jeans. That sounds terrible. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, the worst. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably the worst possible combination. That was a uh, another big upgrade. I don't know if you guys had this moment in your life where you wore regular boxers for the longest time and then you tried briefs and it was like, I can never go back. Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, way I more comfortable and supportive. Boxers have their, I just don't like boxer briefs. Boxers have I, their time I used to place. wear silk boxers, which was the worst fucking decision of my life. Silk it was boxers? A dark period. Oh. Silk boxers, exclusively. Ooh. That's all I wore. What? Pure well, friction, what's baby. Bad about, what's bad about silk boxers? Well, the way they right. would... Everything moved around in silk boxers, not mm. to mention oh, it was, was it just... Kind of, was it kind of like wearing nothing? It, yeah, but just worse because you're just riding against silk the entire time, yeah, and just right, the temperature yeah. immediately goes up twenty degrees in your pelvis. Jackson, so it just doesn't work. <laughs> Jackson, have you really felt silk? It's like almost slippery in a way. So this man was yeah. like superheating his junk and then rubbing it against the front of his underwear all day. Mm. Yeah. And that felt bad. <laughs> Seventh grade. <was> <laughs> Are you sure it didn't feel like like a warm hand job in your pants? <laughs> yeah, but you don't want that throughout the day as you're just walking down the streets. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, always on the verge of nutting. <laughs> Premium waddle. Potent. We gotta hook you up Give with some other undies. <laughs> well, actually, I, I want to ask our signature question before we move on to the other questions right. because we're kind of on the topic, I guess. GG. Uh, we, we are known around the podcast circles as the masturbation podcast. Mm. I'm sure you oh, okay. probably could have guessed that by now. So I want to ask you, are there any wild and wacky masturbatory stories from you? Have you done anything wacky in the sack? Oh, dude. Okay. Uh, this kind of brings up another topic. I recently discussed this. Uh, I was asking people, what's like the weirdest thing you've jacked off to? Not in the sense of like weird 
categories like, oh, I like POV Latina cream pies or some shit like that. But I mean, when I was younger, I didn't have an iPhone. I didn't have an iPod mm-hmm. touch. I wasn't going to jack off at the, at the family computer. So I had to get creative. So I was kind of discussing how, like, if I was able to find a video game, that I was able to find something to spank to. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, the old SmackDown vs. Raw games. Oh, the I don't Divas. Know. Yeah. Yes, the Divas. Mm. I, would, I, would, I would get busy with the Divas. Oh. Cause so would you... Ju- would you pause it or would you watch them wrestling? No, no, no. So, <laughs> okay, it was a few. It was a few things, right? Because if you remember one of the games, uh, the divas would just dance at the menu screen. <laughs> oh. so you didn't even have to bother starting the game up. So yeah, so that was my that you was my pregame the main menu. before I jump into an exhibition. That was my pregame. And uh, if you got real creative, when you go to create a character, you can watch. Uh, you can set a specific intro. So I would just go to the divas intros and just have it be on repeat on loop. And that's, and, and yeah, that's, that's where we went with that. Man, you should have upgraded what to backyard it? wrestling. Did you ever play that one for the Xbox? I never, <laughs> I never played backyard wrestling. No, why? They had a, like an entire live action, uh, diva thing where they were like Ooh. in bikinis and they'd wrestle and like move their clothes around. <sighs> Yep. I used to watch that when I didn't know what a vagina looked like because I kind of let you peek at a vagina once and I was like, wow, there's nothing there. That's weird. Wait, wait, they let you see a vagina? No, like, she, so they were in the bikini. She's, it's live action, so the girl was in her bikini and yeah. then she, like, lifted the bikini, like, down, not far enough where you'd see, like, labia or anything, but down where it's, like, a lot deeper where, like, my penis would show. And I didn't see anything, so I was like, wow, so they're just, like, totally blank there. That's weird. They piss out of their butts and stuff. So weird. <laughs> you thought there was going to be a cock there? No, I just, I thought there'd be something there, but she didn't go far <laughs> enough to give me that closure, and I just assumed there was never anything there. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a Barbie doll. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right, how about one last question, Jackson? Sure. Um... Ooh, okay. Uh, Clanesda asks, "Do you any of the uh, any of you boys have any weird eating habits, like weird food combinations you like?" Hmm. Not really. Anyone for an eating habit? Um, oftentimes, if I'm eating like a burger or a chicken sandwich or whatever, I'll bite around it and <laughs> then save the middle for last because that's the best part. It's about it. Oh, okay, so you're getting the, wor- the the crust out of the way exactly. before you actually yeah. get to the good part. That's fair. I don't do it why in public, not, so it's a secret Why don't you just cut habit. off the crust? Because I like the crust, but I like it, le- I like it first. <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing really negative about this. So you just... Okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, and I've been, do- I've been say- doing that since I was like five, though, is the point. Like, since I ate solid foods, so I've never dropped that habit. I don't think this is weird from, for Australians, but I've been told that Americans don't do it at all. I, I like toast, like toast bread, and then put spaghetti in between. Yeah, and that's have pretty that. fucking Fuck. done. I've done that. Oh. You have done that? <laughs> yeah, you make okay, so you make garlic bread and you put a little bit of spaghetti on top. It's delicious. Well, no, not not, not garlic bread. Just He's just saying bread. just bread. Oh, that's a waste. <laughs> <laughs> a waste of what? Bread? You could have put some garlic on that bread. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. No, but like uh, you, you toast it so it's like a perfect little toasty of spaghetti in between. I mean that and sounds. I guess that's one of that the sounds weird. good. It's not necessarily something we would do, but I, I'd eat that. But it, it's weird in the sense that you guys don't do it. Oh, I like guess. it's super like common. It's, yeah, it's For it's you. super common over here. Really? Yeah. yeah, it's not just one of my weird eating habits. It's just like that's a pretty standard breakfast uh, menu item over here. Wait, spaghetti for breakfast? Breakfast? Is that weird? Yeah. Yeah. A little. Why? That's weirder than the bread. <laughs> but well, that's just what like goulash is, right? I've never even—I don't know what the like, fuck what goulash the f- is. What the fuck is goulash? <laughs> I thought I, thought I was the idiot that didn't know. Okay. Goulash is a goulash, Jackson. Wait, you've never had goulash? <laughs> There's no spaghetti just, in it. Well, goulash is. What's spaghetti? I feel like maybe I'm wrong. What's spaghetti? Spaghetti's like the pasta, right? Yeah. 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 yeah spaghetti, like spaghetti, like pasta with meat. That's, yeah. that's spaghetti. Yeah, that's that's, that's what goulash is. That's not is. breakfast. It's kind of like a stew. That's not what goulash is. Oh, no, I'm not <laughs> goulash. <laughs> What's goulash now? 
I don't know. Uh, well, I guess actually a Google search does bring oh, up well, pasta too in it, but I never do. Yeah, yeah, no, I've always had it with pasta. Then maybe that's just my issue. Mm. Um, yeah, like we have we have that for breakfast. That's like a breakfast dish. So where, like, that's kind of if you same. went to an Australian breakfast diner, you could find what do they call it? Spaghetti bread. Uh, well, toasted sandwiches usually. They call it a toasted sandwich. Yeah. It doesn't mention featuring, spaghetti in the title? Featuring an entire oh, yeah. entree I on mean, its th- own. This, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of different like combinations you can find. Like Spaghetti is one of the more common ones, I feel. Well, yeah, it's a sandwich. You can put whatever you want on it. I imagine there's combinations. <laughs> I'm wondering if the spaghetti sandwich has like a name. Yeah, a spaghetti toasted sandwich. Holy <laughs> shit. What do you mean a name? <laughs> Oh my god! Australia is such a weird. I'm surprised it doesn't have a name like spaghetti, spaghetti Edie or something. Edie yeah. spaghetti, spaghetti at the brekkie. A longy sandwich, noodly. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, a noodly, noodly bread. That's what it should be called from now on. There I'm gonna look go. this up. Now, are you sure that this isn't just something your mom would make you? I mean, that's entirely possible. But I've had it at other places as well. Yeah, spaghetti jaffles, jaffles. That's also what I've heard it called. Are there any Australians in chat that can vouch for me here? <laughs> and why are people people saying just that it makes no. them sick? It's actually just it's <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Maybe I just lived in poverty <laughs> during my early years. I don't know. <laughs> Your mom was like, "It's some new. Oh, it's a goulash, baby. Yeah, it does a fucking <laughs> two slices of bread, and she calls it goulash." <laughs> <laughs> she probably just fucked you up with all the names. Like, it's not even close. She probably just called this, like, I don't know, a donut or something. So now you think this is what donuts are. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe she just put a bunch of fucking ketchup on bread, toasted bread, and called it a pizza, too. <laughs> yeah, apparently this is a real dish over there, but okay, everyone's okay, pretty yeah, baffled good. by it. Apparently that you, it's, you do baked beans it's also, on it, too. We can have, yeah, I was going to say, we can have baked beans as well on it. There's, like... You buy a tin of spaghetti or baked beans what? from the B- local back grocery up. store. You buy oh a my tin God. of spaghetti? What the fuck are you... Yeah. Also, Jackson, it does have a name exactly like what Kai and I said. It's called a toasty. Yeah, that toasted sandwich. Oh, oh, that's kind of cute. Fucking God, I hate it your is. slang What's so wrong with much. That? <laughs> it's so stupid. Apparently some I people put it on regular it. bread and add lettuce. The fuck? I don't do that. That sounds disgusting. How do you really hey, I food? think you guys should try it. What? It's delicious. Yeah, they by the way, do you yeah. add anything else besides just the spaghetti? They sell pre-prepared Sorry? spaghetti sandwiches with corn in them. What? I've never seen that. What'd you say, though, Gigi? Uh, do you add anything else? Do you add, like, a condiment? Oh, yeah. Well, the spaghetti has, like, sauce in it because it's from a tin, usually. Hmm. Like a tomato sauce paste thing. Do you put any syrup um, on it or something? <laughs> yeah, maple syrup sometimes. Yeah, sprinkles. <laughs> Aussie syrup um, Scoop ice cream <laughs> Vegemite uh, No But we do Like cheese is good on it as well Like melted cheese Obviously That's good mm. It's pretty Pretty standard breakfast Pretty nice Alright Baked beans is good with it So what about you guys You got any weird and wacky stuff Not really I'm a bitch for salt no, I... That's about it You're a what? A bitch for salt. <laughs> I, I love salt. <laughs> that, that one threw you off, GG. You're a what? <laughs> I think it threw all of us off. We just didn't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I mean, it's getting so bad. I was actually looking at fucking salt licks on Amazon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wait, you just, you just eat salt? <laughs> no, not just salt, but whatever I do eat, I, I like it with a hefty serving of salt on top. Oh, fair enough. All right. I mean, that's that's all I'll throw enough. another one into the ring have... I've been uh, advocating. There's a restaurant I've been to that does like burgers, and one of the burgers they have has peanut butter on it. I love it. You ever have that? What restaurant, Andrew? That's pretty normal. Uh, Ford's Garage. I've been eating so much Ford's Garage because they make the dopest fucking veggie burgers. Oh yeah. my god, their stuff's good, right? Yeah. Yeah, they have a burger on there called like the Jiffy. And it's it's just a cheeseburger, but with peanut butter on it. And I tried it, and I fucking love it. And I've had it like three times since. I haven't seen that one on the menu, but I'll take your word for it. You guys, <laughs> you guys ever get despondent and depressed after a really good meal? That happened to me yesterday. 
is I had one of the best meals in my life at an Italian place. And just afterwards, I just felt so down because, I, you know, nothing was ever going to be that good again. It actually depressed me when it ended. Food to me is a double edged sword, because when you're craving it to that degree, it's like, fuck, man, I really want that. That's so goddamn good. I'll never have it again. And, and then you finally have it. Expectation. Yeah. And then you finally have it and you go, God, I feel sick. I hate this. Why did I eat all this disgusting garbage? I didn't even feel worst. sick, man. I had steak. It was perfect. And with it, they brought fries and the fries were so fucking fresh and just perfectly crisp. But it felt like they somehow grew a potato in time lapse and served it just for me. It was that fresh. And even the salad. I'm not a salad guy, but it was so fresh and amazing that I'm getting sad just even thinking back on it again. Well, the good news is, Kaya, I don't think the restaurant has burned down in the last week. You can go back <laughs> close up to that meal. I know, but... <laughs> that was their last meal. I, I, yeah, they just served Kaya yeah. closed. <laughs> I'm not there right now, which All depresses me. All the chefs me. were slaving over in the kitchen. The single tear rolls down the chef's cheek as he puts the clothes sign up. I was, fucking, that steak out I was having such a good time eating it, you guys. And they had salt. That was nice. And then once we were out, my girlfriend was like... That was so nice. I love you. And it slipped out of me drunkenly. I said, like, I love that steak. (laughs) (laughs) I just felt like an asshole. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I think so. (laughs) So good. I love you. I love steak. Yum. Oh, well. Uh, We should wrap because I'm getting starvingly hungry. Okay, oh, okay. wait, JG, G- did you answer f- for that question? Oh, I don't really have yours. anything weird. I mean, aside from I recently tried something. This isn't even that bizarre. I don't, well, I don't know. It's have you ever put this is the fattest fucking thing ever put butter on pop tarts. I've heard about mm. that. I've never well, done it, though. Yeah, it's I've, n- I've never tried a pop tart. I don't I really mean, know a pop what tart is. is already sugar, right? like 250 calories on its own. Like, Jesus. That's what I was saying. if you want to hate yourself, try it. But it is, it is good. I, I can't even, I can't even fight it. So it was good. Yeah, it you sounded fucking it. disgusting, but I can't even be mad. Jesus so Christ. So is it the combination of the f- taste together or is it just the fact that you're eating butter? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the, the combination, but I think you have to do it on the, what's the cinnamon flavor? Just uh, mm-hmm. brown no, sugar? Si- no, no, no. It's, uh, or no, not brown it's sugar. It's cinnamon apple, think. right? Isn't it cinnamon apple? No, no, no. It's not. It's just like uh, it's just like brown sugar cinnamon. I think someone else said oh. it. Yeah, the brown sugar. Yeah, that one. Just put butter on it. Heat it up. What? What do pop tarts taste like? Pop tarts. They look interesting. What's the white stuff on top? Frosting. So it's just like a cake. It's a little pastry. Yeah. 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 They, Nine uh, times out of ten, you'll buy it, and it's going to be stale as shit. But the, when you the do irony, though, fresh. is that they, they're called pop tarts because the point is they pop out of the toaster. I personally think they taste better raw. I've never <laughs> toasted a pop tart in my life. I know because they're so good, just straight up, not yeah. toasted. What does the tart count? Like, what, what does tart mean? And that's tart's name? like another word for pastry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad we got to the bottom of that one. Um, so episode 200 is coming up for everyone at home. Those of you who are keeping track, we are going to do something special, I think, right, Kaya? We had an idea the other day. Yeah, if you're down for it and if the people involved are down for it, sure. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So I think we're going to take a few live calls over in our Patreon Discord. So some people are going to be able to call in. And uh, yeah, we're going to do that again, as well as maybe have a few other voices appear during that episode. So that'll be fun. So yeah, we're we're doing something for episode 200. That's coming up soon. Uh, You can head on over to patreon.com slash the official podcast in order to reserve your spot for that event. Um, Apart from that, Mr. Gigi, do you want to shout out your stuff? Uh, Yeah, you guys can find me on YouTube. Just search Mr. GG. Check out the channel if you'd like. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate these guys having me on. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank Thank you. Um, Yeah, that's everything. You boys want to say anything else before we wrap it up? Nope. Nope. I'm hungry. Okay. Well, thank you for listening (laughs) to this week's episode. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. See you guys.